Hey runners, welcome to Run Talk. We help runners manage their running by providing training programs, the right footwear, injury advice, and rehabilitation management strategies. Keeping you on the road to reach your goals and enjoy your running is our highest priority. This week's Run Talk, we're going to um, explain to you how to run a 5K faster without actually getting fitter. Hmm. Is that possible, Steve? I think it is possible because most people don't know how to run a faster 5K or actually to run races properly. And back by popular demand, we are kicking into our how to run a faster 5K challenge for the next four weeks. And Steve, this was hugely successful. Our runners have loved it. They keep asking for it. Mm -hmm. And it's the perfect way to set you up for the year. Yeah, we've had hundreds of runners uh, do this challenge now and successfully go on to a great season of running. Yeah, and uh, one of those runners, Dale Murray, he joined the 5K challenge back in 2019, 2020 when we kicked it off. And, uh, and he just, he used to send me pictures of his Strava splits yeah, of how right. perfect his pacing had become. Now, Dale was an experienced runner. He'd run, in, run several marathons already, mm -hmm. but he just wanted to have something like this that would just give him a little bit better understanding of how to actually pace properly. And man, you should have seen the splits he came and gave us from the 5K, the 10K, the half marathon, his training, everything. It was just such a joy to see this come through. Yeah, it, it was somebody who thought he was uh, a very experienced runner, but he was able to kick on and run a whole bunch of personal bests that year. But really, Steve, there, this works perfectly for anybody who's not an experienced runner or for anybody who goes out there and you run your 5K, you're feeling fantastic at the beginning, thinking this is really good, and then suddenly you crash at kilometer four, and it's an absolute struggle home. And this challenge is something that you can then take on for the rest of the season too. I think that's the important thing, is that the focus of what we do in the in-training running program is to teach you to run smarter rather than to run harder. And that's really what this challenge do, does, is it, it gets you focused on what's important to run faster. So let's go back to, because I think there's three types of runners that this works extremely well for. And we just touched on the first one of being, uh, going out and running too fast. Now, why is it so important to not go out too fast? Well, you always feel better in the beginning, don't you? So it's easy to run faster in the beginning, but in order to run your absolute best potential time, you have to be sort of running right on the pace the whole time, at even pace the whole time. And if you look at world records, that's exactly what they do. Uh, all of the world records that were set on the track in the last year, they had these flashing lights along the track rail that they could follow. And uh, it's just made a ma massive difference to how easy it was for people to break world records. So uh, you can't base your, uh, how hard you're running on how you're feeling. It has to be on your pace. And that's the mistake that most people make is that they run how they feel and they don't realize. Sometimes they don't even know. After a race, they don't realize I've gone out really fast and then went slower at the end. They just know that they didn't achieve the goal that they mm. wanted to do. And we're so lucky to have the 5K park runs weekly mm. that uh, we can go out and you can practice this over and over. So that's the first group. The second one is for someone who is more experienced but uh, perhaps have had the season off over the summer holidays. You know, we're coming off Christmas, we're coming off um, having a, a downtime. So why is the challenge good for anyone who's just starting to think about coming back into their running? Well, you know, you've had three months of uh, hot weather and lots of holiday cheer. Uh, you know, there hasn't been really the same focus on trying to achieve goals because there's been no races during that time. So, uh, you know, this challenge helps you get your mojo back. It, you know, it gets you back into the groove of uh, becoming dedicated again to your training. Yeah. And the third category is for people who have been running through Christmas and uh, or through the break um, and just setting you up ready for the year. Yeah, for a lot of my runners, I just get them to do less training over the, the holidays, but they still have a bit of intensity and it's sort of doing 5Ks is perfect for that uh, because uh, you know, it's not a lot of stress running a 5K. You can do it almost every week. Uh, and you just have these sort of different types of goals at each of those 5Ks leading up to doing a, a really fast 5K. So it's, it's really about learning the process and the strategy during this time to set you up for a really great running year. You know, if, if you can run a 5K PB in February, then that means that uh, it's just gonna set you up for heaps of PBs going forward. 
And it is possible to run a PB without being super fit, simply by putting the, uh, the, what we're going to explain to you in the 5K challenge, what you'll learn over the next four to five weeks and uh, of the process of what it is and the real focus on your pacing. Yeah, that's really what the whole program is about. You know, we, we try to get people to go to training and run specific splits at training, not go there and just see how hard they can run. Uh, and that they can then take that to a race and implement the same strategy. And that's why people in races, uh, anybody who's seen in training runners at races, you'll see that they'll come through at the end of the field, uh, you know, or through the end of the race and pass people at the end mm -hmm. because they're such good pacers. I was talking with a, um, Karen Figolo, one of our runners, mm -hmm. and she said that one of the, her most memorable half marathons was when she ran it with you mm -hmm. to break 145 yeah. at the Gold Coast. And she said she just remembers sitting on you. You really controlled that pace right at the beginning mm -hmm. and, and uh, kept everybody in the group um, yeah. at that pace. Mm -hmm. And she said at the end, they just she felt so strong, just yeah. powered home, passing people mm -hmm. along the way. Yeah, I think she ran 143. So, you know, we really, uh, we just controlled it so well at the beginning. People just ran away from us. We let them run away from us. But we caught all those people up by the end. So it, it really is a great feeling. Like, it's nothing more difficult than at the end of a race, finding that you can hardly run and people are passing you at the end. It's so much better just to be powering through to the finish. And I think you end up running so much stronger just because, you know, you're in a mental frame of feeling strong and powerful. So. I remember one of our um, other marathon schoolers from 2019, Keith Brewster, he, uh, he wrote in one of his Facebook posts he said, here I am, an older man, it's, passing all these younger people yeah, at right. the end of my half marathon. Yeah. It was just, he was just blown away, away mm -hmm. by what he had actually, what he could do in that mm -hmm. half marathon, simply by um, focusing on his pacing. Yeah, and look, at any level, this is important. Uh, you know, the, the more even pace you can run, the better off you're going to do. Uh, I, I paced some of the leading runners in the Brisbane Marathon one year, the female runners, I should say, and... Uh, at about 5K, they were in around about 20th place. And I think they all ended up in the top five of these three women that I was coaching. Uh, because, yeah, just so many people go out too fast. So it really, it's such a critical thing. And that's why it's such an important focus of our whole training program. So the 5K challenge, which it will be kicking in on Friday, the first video will be released. Um, it will take you through the process that you need to know to um, be able to run a faster 5K. And so make sure that you, you jump in and, and join the program. It's free, you don't have to pay anything for it. There is um, there's a, a portal with some video lessons, really short. There's the Facebook page, you jump in with the community that will be involved. And, uh, and I can tell you, it's just a, a, a really, um, perfect way to get your year set up right. And it's a lot of fun too. So that's yeah. the other really, I think, important thing when it comes to running is you have to be enjoying what you're doing because otherwise it's hard to, to put in the, the training. And this is just a heaps of fun to do this. So join our free How to Run a Faster 5K Challenge. You can do that with the link below and, uh, and set yourself up for the year. And we love running.